Now, what does this mean? This means that function x is one of the antiderivatives of function a. Okay? I say, I say that, sorry, yeah, I say that again. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. Okay, let's clear this up. Now, function a is one of the antiderivatives of function x. Okay, yes. The function a is one of the antiderivatives of function x. Function x is the derivative of a, but a is one of the antiderivatives of function x. Now, I'm going to illustrate it this way, okay? But well, it's actually my method, but I think it's best for, for students to really understand uh, what's going on, okay? So, you see, the, this is the process, right? This is the process we are concerned with, and this is a over here, okay? So, we take a, we differentiate it, we get function x. So, a is one of the antiderivatives of function x. However, notice that a can be a range of functions, okay? And when we differentiate them, we get function x. And that is why a is only one of them. a is only one of the antiderivatives of function x because as you know that if a equals to x squared plus x plus 1, let's just say, this 1 over here, it can be 1, it can be 2, it can be 4. And when we differentiate that, we will get the same function, function x. So that's why a can take, um, loosely speaking, a, a, a amount of different forms. Okay, and the a that we are concerned with is only one of the antiderivatives of function x because that you know when we differentiate we can get function x. There can be another a we differentiate that we also get function x. So a is one of the antiderivatives of function x. Okay, and to clear that up, what they did was that they wrote this. Now knowing that a is only one of the antiderivatives, what I'll do is that I'll write a. I will plus a big f over here. Sorry, our equals, so A is equals to a big F over there plus C where, okay, this big F over here is any derivative of function X. Okay? I, I hope I make that clear. Okay, A is one of the antiderivatives of function X. It's a, a unique one. We are looking at a specific one. Just like how we are looking for a specific area, okay? Just like how we are looking for a specific area. So we are looking for a specific function of A. Okay, and that's equals to any antiderivative of function x plus by c, where c would give us that unique function a that we are looking for. Okay? Okay, not to spend too much time on that, okay? Uh, just rewind the video. Okay. So now obviously this is what we have where a is one, any, and we constant c. So we want to find the c over there, not to be confused with arbitrary constant because the term was not made up yet or at least I think it wasn't made up yet, okay? I will just let x equals to a. x equals to a equals to a, okay? Take away c, okay? But what is, sorry, plus c, but what is a? Remember a from our first definition as the area under the graph? Function a, okay, is the area under the graph at this point over here. But certainly there's no area because that's the starting point. So this is equal to zero, and c is equal to minus uh, big function a, okay, and then substituting inside here, we got, okay, a is equals to, sorry, now we, we substitute x, okay, because of the variable point, okay, equals to big function x, okay, where x is one of the antiderivatives plus c, so it's minus f, big f a, because we established c equals to this over here, and what do we want to find? We want to find the area from A to B. We will let X equals to B, okay? X equals to B, we will get B take away A, just as, as we have shown, and replacing the integral sign, okay? A to B of a certain function Fx dx is equals to big Fb take away big Fa, where the big F is one of the antiderivatives equivalently to write that df dx is equals to function f. And this, I present to you, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the fundamental theorem of calculus here. Okay? Now, let's just talk about the meaning of it. Why is it so important? It's important because it allows us to reduce the problem of finding the sums, okay, to finding the antiderivatives. Remember, at that time, okay, and you should really beg the question, at least I for me, I, I beg to ask myself the question. 
Which one really came first? Was it the indefinite integral or was it the definite integral that came first? Well, certainly, okay, if they wrote this statement first, okay, the definite integral definitely came first because they already set the limits A and B. And that would equal to this one over here, the sum. So integration, as it started out with, was really concerned with finding the areas under the graph as opposed to something like integrate a certain function, okay, as we all see nowadays in our textbooks. So the definite integral came up first, and then they, they look at this, and then they needed to find another way. So they wrote this one to prove the fundamental theorem. And this is, and what is the big function f that they put over here? Well, it's the n, any antiderivative or the function over here. And this was when the integrals came, the, inter, the, the, the indefinite integral came in as this thing over here. Because as we know, we want to reverse the process, so we want to get the big F, and that is that we integrate F x over here. Okay. Now, we, I would like to really pay special careful uh, attention to the notation. Now, this actually means okay, anti derivative. Okay, and it does not, it doesn't really mean integrate or at least uh, integration because the process here is finding anti derivatives. Okay, however, for 300 years, we've been using this notation, so it, we should stick with us some time. There was one person that tried to introduce antiderivative function, but his book disappeared before yesterday's newspaper. Okay, so there we go, the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay, which states that for us to find a definite integral, we need to find antiderivatives. And because it's convention for the last 300 years to write antiderivative as integrate, okay, that's why we write it this way. Okay, but bear in mind that the fundamental theorem of calculus is such as like this, finding the definite integral. Okay, I hope I did a, a, a pretty decent job and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.